Welcome to the Insurance Guy podcast. From sales to insurance advice, we discuss ways to protect your business and grow it. Make sure to like and share this podcast. And don't forget to check us out at theinsurers.ca for all your business insurance needs. And here's your host, Mr. On. And welcome to Leap TV with Shireen Francis. I'm your host, where we're inspiring entrepreneurs to take a leap in business. Today we're with Anja Panwala, who is an insurance provider for small to medium-sized businesses. Today we're going to be talking about how he was an introvert and moved a little bit into his extroversion to increase his sales. Anja, welcome to the show. Thank you, Shereen, for having me on your show. Awesome. I'm, uh, first of all, really excited to be sharing the stage where I know that your lineup of guests have been extraordinary people, so I'm just excited to be here. Well, it's a pleasure having you, and we only love to feature extraordinary people, so you're one of them. Thank you. It's yes, like, yeah, yes. it's pretty much like, uh, that's the same thing my mom would say. Yes, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, you, we were talking backstage a little bit yep. about your journey into business and how you got started. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I am an insurance broker by trade. Um, I originally started off, I graduated school, and... I was trying to figure out, trying to find my line of work. Mm -hmm. And 99% of people in the insurance industry, if you ask them, will respond by saying they just fell into it. Mm -hmm. They just applied for all jobs, got rejected, and they ended up in the insurance industry. And that's how my story began. I started off working in an inbound call center mm -hmm. um, where I would essentially just wait for calls to come in and try to sell the policy and things of that nature. But at some point, I decided to take the leap and become responsible for my own business. Essentially becoming my own outbound sales agent and build my book of business, a book of business, or should I say book of relationships. So what made you decide to go from, you know, being that outbound call salesperson to having your own business? What was going on in your life? Well, uh, great question. Um, I originally started off in, you sort of, it's hard to, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like you feel that you, it's almost every, every day you're going into work, it's sort of like, it's sort of like re repetitive, mm -hmm. you know, not to shoot down the job or yeah. anything or my past jobs. I enjoyed them quite much, but I felt that there was more to it and there was some sort of itch I needed to scratch. Mm -hmm. So I decided that, you know what, for me to be able to pursue the passion of me being able to communicate with people, uh, I decided to go on the offensive side and start make, took the position as an outbound commercial agent. So was it commercial broker? Sorry. So when so when you made that decision to to do your business, was there any challenges or fears, or did you just knew that this was right for you and you jumped right in? How did you know it was time? <laughs> well, <laughs> na na I'm a natural introvert, and I'm the type of guy. If there was a party, I would enter and leave without you even noticing that I was here or gone. Like I usually stay to myself. Mm. Um, I, and you know obviously extroverts are people who are very energetic and very social like they're the type of guys who or girls who can go to work go to a table full of strangers and introduce themselves individually and stuff and I'm not a, that type of person yeah, yeah, cool. I'll go I'll only go to a party if I have if I know somebody who's know going somebody, there yeah. <laughs> otherwise it's not even an event I would I'd want to step in step into yeah. so it wasn't just like I made I woke up one morning and said great I'm gonna start being somebody who I am not so it was baby steps originally when I decided to take the position as an outbound uh, outbound broker where I was responsible building my own business it was immense amount of fear mm -hmm. built within me mm -hmm. and I started by doing baby steps by first I did was after I took the position and panicking while I signed the contract doubting myself every moment saying am I doing the right thing yeah um, or is this the biggest mistake I'm not gonna have that regular paycheck coming in every right. two weeks yeah. am I doing it but hey, I took the leap, right. as you could say, and I jumped in. After jumping in, I started to, I started by just approaching warm leads. Mm -hmm. And warm leads are people that you sort of have a relation, relationship with mm -hmm. to start off with. Usually that's your friends, your family members, and you start letting people know your services and mm -hmm. what you're doing these days um, and getting the word out there. Right. That's how it usually started off, step by step. And you sort of start building confidence. Right. But then what do you do when your warm leads start to run out? Right. Because now, you're, cause you, again, you were an introvert. So right. now 
you, going out into you no, know it, talking it, to strangers what was that like for <laughs> you <laughs> First of all, I stumbled like I was back in high school. Yeah. Um, it was I didn't know what to say, how to build relations. It's 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 believe it or not, building relations is a skill on its own. Yeah. Um, it's not that you can just enter a place and to have a con have a quick two seconds of conversation with somebody and build a relationship with them right off the bat. You have to spend time, get to know them. And one of the benefits I had of being an introvert is that I like to observe. Right. And that made me a good listener. And when I sat down with people, introduced myself, even though I wasn't approaching the whole table of people, I'd maybe pick out one or two people who had a smile on their face the minute I walked in and I sort of built that relationship with them right off the bat. Like that indirect, like, you know, they give you that warm vibes, right. that warm vibes, and you, so I approached them, introduced myself, started talking, and I just realized that I made a relationship, yeah. a warm relationship out of a cold one. And it starts off that way. Yeah. So then in that moment, you're like, hey, it's not as bad as I thought it would it, be, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It, it started off in that concept. Now, many sales professionals yeah. or many businesses who are starting out, they, their biggest fear is cold calling. Yes. There are many people who want to get out there and will, there's, if, if you go on YouTube, you go on Facebook, there are so many people in advertisements coming out uh, saying, hey, read this ebook and you will never have to cold call again. I'm sorry, but most of the best relationships I've made for my clients were generated through cold calling. Who didn't know, I just tried, I called maybe 50, 60 people a day. Yeah. And believe it or not, the first, 10 call, first call I was making, I was panicking. I was, I was sweating bricks. Um, I didn't want to, I was trying to find reasons not to, not to dial the number because right. I was afraid that the other person's going to curse me off, yeah. they're going to yell at me, they're right. going to tell me to you know, get lost and swear yeah. at me, whatever the case is, and make me feel inferior and insecure mm -hmm. and I'll mm -hmm. probably quit the job. Mm -hmm. But believe it or not, people are not like that. Yeah. And that was a wrong mistake on my part yeah. to believe something like that, believe that fear that cold calling is, is a horrible thing. Yeah. And if people do hang up, if people do hang up on you, is there a polite way of saying they're busy and they'll talk to you again later? Don't take it personal. Don't right? take it personal. Right, yeah. And uh, there were, if I may give five tips that I applied to myself. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, how do you, like, can you help us with things like that? Because introversion, the fear of speaking to people that you've never, <laughs> you know, just, yeah. hi, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, even door knocking, that's a common thing, especially for people that are considering going into business. Well, who's going to buy for yeah. me? Like, yeah. how am I going to build this? And it's awesome that you were able to overcome that and just leap in. So what were what would you say are the best ways to develop um, that skill set? Actually, before I give you those tips, yeah. I want to throw in a quick story in here. Sure. About how you built my conviction from 98% to 100. Okay. About six weeks ago, yeah. I wanted to, I came up with the idea one day sitting around that I'm going to start a TV show. But before I started the TV show, I didn't know what to do, mm -hmm. where to go. And this TV show I started on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. The TV show, or the plan was to start a Facebook Live and interview local businesses, yes. entrepreneurs, sales professionals in the industry. And then one day I was hoping that somebody will watch that Facebook Live feed yeah. and give me a TV show out of it. Yes. I reached out to a couple of my friends yeah. and I told them about the ideas yeah. and they said, uh, this is a dumb idea. Nobody's going to watch the show yeah. or anything of the sort. And out of the 98% of conviction I had, I let that 2% which required validation, wow. take over the other 98, and I scrapped the idea in my head, wow. and I tossed it out. Wow. Three days later, I met you, and I asked you, what's your and TV show about? <laughs> and, and you came out with this idea, and you told me that it took you about three days. Yes. Is that correct? From I idea to execution, it. Yes. right? Yeah. It came through with it. Yeah. And I just told myself, and after I met you, that conviction run from 98 to 100 percent saying Beautiful. if i have an idea i should stick with it because if i stuck with it this might have been the shireen francis and on japan wall show yes you know that's so amazing. so the best part about it is that you know i just want to throw that story in this yeah. is that many people have ideas but they'll seek validation mm. and they'll shoot and you know not everybody's gonna is is gonna agree with you because a lot of your friends and family uh they care about you they don't want to see you fail right, right. right that's their intention they don't care about the part that you succeed they don't want you to fail yeah. um, because that's their worry is you hurting yourself or right. falling off and you know uh ending up in a position that you, that's very uncomfortable that's their fear right. um, and that's why they'll try to t they'll try to keep you away from that but anyways um that's th amazing and i love the the flip side of things because again if you you know when even the very idea of going out on your own to start your own business, mm -hmm. right? 
there's that fear. A lot of, I remember, even for myself, like, well, why would you do that? You know, yeah, why don't yeah. you just get a regular job, yeah. stay in your job, you do, have great benefits, yeah. right? Um, and so, really good points there. And I, I, we, I was actually, you actually interviewed me on your TV show, which <laughs> yeah. was pretty cool. Which was a live so TV show, yeah, yeah. Where could we watch that on your Facebook, right? On yeah, your absolutely. Facebook. On my so Facebook. we'll put links to that on awesome. after the show. Yeah. So, so. So what are those tips so about cold calling? The tips. Okay. So in sales, not just in cold calling. Yeah. It's an acronym I set for myself called C C H E L. Mm -hmm. So the first C stands for credibility. Mm -hmm. Build credibility by living up to the little details. Okay. If you're telling a client you're gonna be at a certain place mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock, be there by 9.59. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're not late. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're dressed to impress. Mm -hmm. These little things build credibility. If you're gonna and guide the, uh, build credibility by guiding the client through the process right. of your service or sales that, hey, I, we placed the order for you. Your package is coming in three days. Mm -hmm. Call, two days, one day, your package has arrived. Right. Let's go grab a cup of coffee. Let's. I'll get you to explain the details. Be credible with your statements. Right, right, right. The second C is criticism. Mm -hmm. Do not criticize your competition. Mm -hmm. When you're in an industry and there's competition, mm -hmm. your automatic way of just jumping into trying to get the sale is by bad mouthing the competition, right, right. the incumbent, or the current the current person who's competing with you for the same mm -hmm. for the same sale. Mm -hmm. What you do is you make yourself look unprofessional by criticizing the other professional, mm -hmm. um, and you disrespect the industry you're currently in. Right. Which is a huge, yeah. huge. It uh, doesn't look good, and doesn't no. feel good either, right? right. And Absolutely. from the outside, it's like, well, you know, right. What do you have against that? Like, people want to know that they're, they like, they want to trust you. Exactly. And if you are talking, you know, bad talking, it just it kills the vibe of the exactly. sale, I can exactly. imagine, right? So instead, you should be worried about de delivering a value proposition. Mm -hmm. How does your product or service separate you from your competition? Right. Don't worry about what they're doing. Worry about what you're doing. Right. Right? The next tip goes to H, which stands for help, honest help. When you're out there making the sale, look to honestly supply the product that is or service that's needed by your client. Mm -hmm. Don't try to oversell to make that extra quick bucks. Mm -hmm. Don't try to undersell by providing them a lower price and a product that's not going to be there for them when they need it. Mm -hmm. And make sure it's honest. And part of that honesty is walking away when you don't have the product or service for them or guiding them yeah. through maybe a friend or family who does have that product right. available for them. Just sending the referral. Right. Yeah. And what you do by doing that is you keep the door open. Mm -hmm. When you're supplying somebody to on, supplying somebody honest help, they will respond back to you by either purchasing the product you're offering because they, people can see honesty and they can smell, you know, yeah. dishonesty. Of course. Yeah. And if they don't even purchase the product from you, that's fine. But they've seen the way you're, you, they've seen your character, and they'll send referrals off to you. Wow. So that leaves the door open for that. Yeah. Right. Cool. E. And there's two more, E and L. Yeah. All right. Get ready for this. This is this is this is my favorite okay. one. Okay. I'm, I'm bracing myself. All right. E is for ego. Lose it. Okay. Okay. If you are going into sales or business and you're going in with their ego, you will get smashed out of that field faster than you can get in. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are times you're going to be rejected on the phone. Yeah. You're going to do all the work and somebody else is going to take the cake. Mm -hmm. You're going to be. You're going to. You may lose a client for fifty bucks and. For you may lose, you may do all the work, and the person gave the business to their brother-in-law. Right. Well, you never know what can happen. Right. But and you have to know because what hap You have to lose the ego because what you do to yourself by keeping an ego in this is letting people know that by keeping an ego that you blame the failures that you've had in sales or your business or anything of the sort. You're gonna blame each and everybody. Mm -hmm besides the one who really needs that, to take responsibility. Which is yourself, right. Yeah, exactly. makes sense. And the last one in marketing is, is stands for L, which is loud. Be loud in the marketplace. You have to spend time in brand management, mm -hmm. media, social media, mm -hmm. get your name out, uh, network marketing. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case you're industry in, you have to get your name out there. There's a thousand people in, yeah. in competing for the same thing. Yeah. How are you going to set yourself apart? Mm -hmm. If brands like Nike and Apple mm -hmm. are still spending millions of dollars in advertising and you're just entering the field, yeah. well, what's you better, so what's, go, what's going to set, they, yeah. just the noise they're making mm -hmm. is going to distract the attention to them. Mm -hmm. So what exactly are you going to do to separate yourself from generating business? And this is what's powerful about your whole TV show that you've created because mm -hmm. 
I don't know an insurance agent that has um, that has a TV show. Right. And so I I don't know much about insurance myself. So I'm going to be curious to hear what you have to say about business and all mm -hmm. of those topics. So it's amazing that you again took another leap into doing something that yeah. was out of your comfort zone. Right, like yeah. an introvert. Now I'm gonna go on TV. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Believe it or not, just being on this TV show right now. Yeah. There's a thousand voices in my head. Yeah. Nine hundred and ninety-nine of them are telling me to run, pass out, <laughs> or just scream. Okay. But there's that we, one we, you gotta focus on. on staff, right? Right? So medical on staff. Right. Just but there's that one voice that you gotta focus in on. Yeah. And that's the one that's telling you that listen, time is finite. Yes. Sixty. When I turn. 60 70 and I look back at this opportunity that being on television on such a great show Am I gonna regret not, not taking this opportunity? Mm. Absolutely. I would regret it mm. So I rather fight the fear and jump in on the show because it's something I can I can be proud about doing Yes, yeah. just leap. All just right. Leap. <laughs> yes, perfect. Well, it was a pleasure having you today you. on our show Thank you. And um, I, I love hearing what you had to say about the cold calling and the tips on connecting and building relationships with people You don't know right. They were Thank very you. helpful. Thank you. Great. Before I wrap up I just wanted to say I really appreciate your time would love it if you could subscribe and share this podcast and also check us out at the insurers.ca